How's it going, gamers? <laughs> I wanted to make a quick little video about my thoughts on Euphoria so far. So first off, I want to talk a little bit about the first season. I was a little late on the first season. I didn't watch it until after like everyone had already pretty much finished talking about it. But by the time I got to it, I was really impressed. Not only stylistically, but it's like the way that it handles a lot of these like kind of taboo issues like drug addiction, relationship abuse, and like repressed sexuality is is all very compelling. It's all written very well, and I feel like most of it is given the care and the, the delicacy that it needs. Particularly, I found myself compelled by Rue's storyline, Nate as well. Nate was, he is something else to watch. He's just this terrible, terrible person, but it's, God, it's, it's so compelling. And then all the stuff with Rue's addiction and her journey to sobriety that, spoiler alert, uh, doesn't end up going well. Um, that was all really compelling too. And I think those were the two main highlights for me was Rue and Nate. And the way that those characters wound up interacting throughout the season, I also thought was really, um, was really well done. And I, I liked the uh, two special episodes they did. The one about Rue in particular. That one was literally just like two people talking in a, in a, I guess like a, what would be Euphoria's version of a Waffle House. And, <laughs> and just chatting about, about life and stuff. And it feels very, it, it feels like a very personal look into the character and it does wind up being important for the second season although not as much as i would like to but we'll get to that um and jules's was pretty good as well i find myself uh, in the first season really just kind of <laughs> really just being annoyed with jules but i couldn't even get super mad at her about it you know because it wasn't the kind of annoyance where i was like ah I don't like what they're doing with this character. It was the annoyance where I was thinking to myself, ah, damn, this character is really like, her actions, like they make total sense, but the, it's just getting on my fucking nerves, you know? And that's something that the first season did really well as well. There are a couple exceptions I will note. Kat in particular, I'm not the biggest fan of how her character arc was handled, but that was really just like one gripe as far as the whole season was concerned. And it is pretty major because there, there's a kind of significant amount of screen time dedicated to Kat. But at the very least, it was still kind of interesting. I was never really bored with her storyline, but it, it definitely is the weakest of the ones that are there. Oh my god, I just forgot about this till just now. Um, McKay, Cassie and McKay's relationship is also really great that i feel like that's handled really well in the in the first season especially with mckay trying to figure himself out and cassie not really being at the same emotional level as as mckay is oh i'll get into it <laughs> i'll get into it then we get to the second season and i feel like this second season is kind of dropping the ball and there are a lot of reasons why i feel that way but the positives out of the way first. The aesthetic of the show is still great. In fact, I think it's probably even better this time around on a purely visual level. Whether or not all of that is in service to the characters is a whole other matter because ultimately what's going to be more memorable at the end of the day is rather, rather than the technical competency of something that's going on, it's how well it relates to the characters. For instance, in season one, when um, Rue and Jules kiss for the first time and the camera's like spinning around the bed and stuff, I remember that not just because it's a cool technique, but because it highlights the moment and really makes it impactful. This time around, there's a lot of great set pieces visually and, and camera work and the whole thing is shot on film, which is fucking insane. <laughs> Um, they really threw all the money in the world at this show and it shows. You can tell that 
this thing was expensive. Now, I wish they would have put the same effort into the character arcs. <laughs> because some of them are not good. <laughs> oh, boy. First off, the ones that I like. I think the highlights of the second season so far are Fez, Nate, and Cal. And Lexi as well, but she doesn't do as much as I would like for her to be doing. At least not so far. Um, Fez to a certain extent as well. Fez's stuff, he's been upgraded from a side character to a main character, basically. At least he was in the first couple episodes. And now in episode four, he was barely in it. Which is... Whatever, I'll get over it. But he has... His, his stuff is all really compelling. They could make an entire side show about him and Ashtray's drug escapades, and it would be amazing. Because within the, like in the first episode, Ashtray jumps off a couch and kills somebody with a hammer, which was awesome. <laughs> it's a double-edged sword because in another way, it's not awesome because, and, and Noel Miller pointed this out in his, um, like, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just repeating what he said, basically, because uh, he made a really good point with how since that happened, now all I'm thinking about is when is Ashtray going to hit somebody else with a hammer? And I'd like to expand on that a little more, not just repeat it. The reason why I'm thinking that, uh, why I agree with him and thinking, damn, when is Ashtray going to hit somebody with a hammer next is because the rest of the show isn't interesting enough to compensate for it. Now, granted, there are parts that still are, um, apart from Fez, Cal and Nate in particular, are still great. Cal in particular, like Jesus Christ. They're doing so much with him and it's all fantastic. The third episode opened with uh, an entire sequence of him as a younger man. And the reason why it works so well is not just because it's like kind of a tragic tale about Cal finally figuring out his sexuality and that he likes men and finding somebody that he wants to be with, but on top of that, it's him getting kind of trapped um, in this heterosexual relationship with his wife that he doesn't even want to be in, which explains all of his other actions that we've seen in the first step in the first season already. With that one sequence, we already know basically why he is the way he is, and it's so beautifully done not just because of that but because they're not heavy-handed with it at all they show you this sequence of events of him in high school and like meeting his future wife and being a little being bros with his best friend and then kissing his best friend as you do and then it all crashing down and it prevents all that and relies on your knowledge of his previous actions in the first season for it to have impact. The reason why it has meaning is because you know what else he's done. You know about all the shit that he's pulled in the past season and now that they're showing you all of this stuff as him younger, it reframes all of that. It's amazing. Nate as well, they do a lot of great stuff with him. There are aspects of Rue's storyline that I appreciate. Her kind of spiraling and and pushing everybody out of her life um it sucks to watch because i want better for her i want her to like get sober and appreciate her family and shit <laughs> have a happy life you know be with her girlfriend and, and the way that they're handling that the way that they're having this character do all this shit that i don't want her to do is in line with how the first season was doing it and that i'm mad at her for doing this stuff but I'm not mad at the show by extension, you know? It's still really well done for the most part. Now, here's where we run into issues, which is all of the other characters. Um, remember McKay? Yeah, he's not here anymore. <laughs> he's in the first episode for like two minutes, and then he's uh, like he's been written out, basically. I don't know why. That's a gigantic loose thread. I feel like they were going to do so much more with him and then somewhere along the line he, he just got written out. Um, and I'm not here to 
speculate on why that is. Um, the truth of the matter is we're, we don't know. Um, all of this speculation about drama behind the scenes like is all just speculation. Um, we are not going to know, at least not right now, why McKay is out of the show or why certain storylines are happening the way they are. And while it can be fun to think about, ooh, what if this is the reason why? Or what if um, this guy uh, punched this other dude in the dick and now they don't get along on set, so they had to rewrite the whole storyline? I just don't think it's that productive at the end of the day, especially without any confirmation of whether or not it's true. It is kind of reductive, in my opinion. Uh, it takes away from the actual problem where McKay got sexually assaulted in the first season and they basically just dropped it like that is that's a whole other area that they could have explored and especially with how that impacts his relationship with Cassie and that is just it's just gone now like they break up off screen they have one talk and then McKay just fucks off. <laughs> He's just gone. And I, I, they did him so dirty. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I think McKay's absence kind of leaves a hole in the rest of the season. Because now Nate and Cassie are a thing. And without us seeing the conclusion of her and McKay's relationship... It just feels like it came out of nowhere. So you don't really care about it as much. Granted, it is a little interesting when it first starts off, but mostly for the fact of you're thinking, what's Nate going to do about this? Not how is Cassie feeling about this? At least that's what I thought about it. It just seems like an unnecessary omission to leave McKay out of the show. It would be nice to know why he's not here anymore. But oops. Speaking of, Cassie, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but her and Nate's storyline started out pretty interesting, and now I just, I can't stand it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's difficult to really explain why I feel like that, but I just know that there is, like there's a disconnect like between me and the character now. Whereas in the first season, we we got to know these characters, like all of them. And now, I don't know. It's fucking, because it's not that we don't know who the characters are anymore. We still have all that backstory. And it would be redundant for them to repeat all of that just for the sake of this season. But at times, it just doesn't feel like they're exploring stuff as much as they should. Because the most that, that we really get out of the Nate and Cassie stuff is that she is so attached to him. And forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but we don't really know why. There wasn't any precedent for it in the first season. It isn't set up at all. And they kind of make, they, they, they kind of explain it with Nate's side of it and how with, with that whole bit about she was there the whole time. How did I not notice? But it still feels like a, a cheap kind of excuse rather than a valid explanation for why this is happening. And I do want to point out, I I do like the the montage that they did with Nate and how um, he's like fantasizing about a, a life with her because there's there's something about that where like he kind of sees Cassie as his next conquest or whatever. So like I get it from, from Nate's side. I understand why he's into it and why that's happening uh, from his point of view from cassie's I, st I still i don't feel like there was enough given am i making sense i don't fucking know <laughs> i guess cassie's whole thing just doesn't feel as important because yes there are elements of um, abuse in this relationship and they explore it a little bit in the fourth episode but it just comes out of nowhere because rather than the whole thing kind of being predicated on this terrible, toxic situation, the way that the show is kind of presenting it just kind of makes it feel more like a fling. And then 
Cassie gets a little too attached and Nate's just kind of like, get the fuck out of my face or, or whatever. I don't, what am I fucking saying? It just doesn't feel as important this time around. And I feel like most of that is because there's there was no precedent to it with the first season. And I hear that the show was rewit er, rewitten, rewritten a bunch, which we can only speculate why. But I feel like that might have done some damage to it because it feels like from like based on what the first season was doing, it feels like that there was supposed to be more of a thread between Nate and Jules. It's, oh, and I just remembered, especially with Jules' special episode. Jules is still very clearly in that special episode, still in love with Nate. Or at least there's some kind of attachment to him that she can't get rid of. And it feels like that was being set up for the second season to, in, to explore that a lot more. However... I don't think Nate and Jules have even interacted once this entire season. I feel like Jules and Cassie were like their their spots were I feel like Cassie kind of replaced Jules in a sense. I feel like Jules was supposed to have this whole thing with Nate and then they rewrote it to be about Cassie or something for some reason, which then got McKay written off the show or whatever. I don't fucking know. Regardless, it just feels weird. It doesn't feel natural or like it's um, an organic part of the show. Okay, I think that's enough or anything about that one. I just find myself a lot of the time in this season waiting for the more interesting character arcs to come back around. Um, which sucks because in the first season it was all very consistent. I could only really point out one character arc that I wasn't super fond of. And even then, it wasn't even like that badly handled. But here, God, it's like, I don't care that much about Jules this time around. They're not giving enough um, for Rue to do. Rue is mostly just high. Like she got a bunch of drugs from, from that lady and then that was it, I guess. Uh, t to be fair, we're only halfway through the season. So I guess that might change. Something about it just doesn't... It doesn't feel like they're giving as much care to each of the characters this time around. Because I feel like most of the character drama that is happening, rather than feeling like it's trying to tackle a specific issue... It's more just petty high school drama. If you've been on Twitter and you've seen people compare this season to Riverdale, I feel like there's a reason for that. Because I didn't really see that when the first season was happening. It was mostly just people talking about how much they liked it. And maybe I was in a different Twitter space back then than I am in now. And that may very well be the case, but I feel like I've seen a lot of Riverdale comparisons when it comes to this show. Like people just calling it like, prettier Riverdale or something like that and they're not wrong <laughs> like I definitely feel like there is an element missing I definitely feel like the characters aren't given the same amount of care that they were last season or at least most of them aren't Cal has been given the most care out of everybody um, a lot of my favorite stuff has been centered around Cal which is I hope you realize how insane it is that I'm saying that, considering how terrible of a person Cal is, and just how like he fucked up his kids' lives and his marriage has fallen apart and everything. But it's true, the most compelling stuff this season has been about Cal. And I feel like that core that we had in Rue last season isn't really present this time around. Rue is still definitely here, but it feels like she's not really the the focus anymore, which is fine in concept. If you're going to do that, you have to come up with something else as the center. Making a show about as many characters as the show is about is always going to be a tough challenge. But even when when you're doing that, you have to have a center to keep it going and keep the pacing feeling consistent. 
and it all has to kind of at least be tangentially related to that center for it to really work and i don't think this season has that because i feel like there's two sides of this season right now everything going on with nate cassie maddie lexi um, and cal is on one side and then rue elliot and jules is on another side and they have nothing to do with each other except for that one time that cal was <laughs> that scene where cal went over to fez's and was like give me the drives and fez was like what the fuck are you talking about that was great still didn't really have much to do with it <laughs> um, or at least it hasn't really wound up having much to do with rue and jules and elliot which um is a problem because when you're way more invested in the storyline of one character and they don't have anything to do with this other part of the story it leads you to not being as invested in that other part because i feel like in the first season even when there was stuff that felt like completely unrelated take for example a lot of nate stuff didn't really have a terrible amount to do with rude directly but it was his relationship with jules that he was forming during through this dating app that did wind, wind up having an effect on rue and that's not really present here these connections between these characters that seem completely unrelated i don't really i'm not finding that here which makes the parts that i'm not as interested in less engaging because once it's completely disconnected it just feels like a different show and i don't know what about this season is causing this to happen but it just all feels so disconnected from each other it feels like the story has expanded in scope but the lines connecting each character has gotten thinner so we've got these two different storylines that are going and don't really have anything to do with each other which sucks <laughs> Because I would like for it to not be like that. I would like for it to, like, for for one thing to happen and then everything else feels the repercussions of that. Because there's so much that just feels inconsequential in this season. Lexi's play um, is not getting the development I feel like it deserves. We're halfway through the season and auditions aren't even done yet. Fez is getting a lot, but it's inconsistently spread throughout the season, making it feel kind of staggered and not in the best way rue rue has kind of stagnated for these past couple episodes the end of this most recent episode i feel was great with rue um and her having like a, a come to jesus moment with her dad and feeling his presence and apologizing to him i thought that was fantastic but the in-between moments between the first episode and this happening have felt like a, an eternity. It hasn't felt like much has happened in between the first episode and the end of this episode. And considering how much time they gave to Rue this, this season, when she ultimately has not as much to do, it makes it feel less important. And it feels weird saying less to do because on paper she's done a fuck ton this season. She's like gotten involved in a drug sale gone bad she got fronted like 5k worth of drugs or something like that jules cheated on her again but just the way that it's all been paced like most of that happened immediately and then after all that happened we've just been dragging our feet to get to this moment i don't know I just feel like this season isn't nearly as well paced which is a big problem especially when you're carrying this amount of characters through the show it's it's deeply unfortunate because i feel like this show started out as kind of an important commentary on a lot of taboo issues that like some kids might watch it and it might open their eyes to stuff going on around them but now i feel like the focus is less on discussing these issues and more on the pettiness of drama which if you're into that hey man that's fucking sick keep loving that shit dude and to an extent i like that kind of stuff i think that petty drama certainly has its place but i don't think its place is in euphoria you feel me i feel like a lot of this stuff between nate cass and maddie has just felt like petty drama it hasn't felt like much more than that there hasn't been any kind of it hasn't gone deeper than just like oh nate is cheating on maddie but like kind of not really and cassie is like 
a little is like going crazy about it but also not really i guess the only really meaningful i i think the most meaningful stuff we've had so far has been with cal it has been the most well paced it has been the most emotional it's been the best written as well it it, it feels like the same level as the, as what we were getting in the first season oh god I forgot about Cat. Cat has a storyline in this season, and it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> it just it feels a little underwritten. There's not a lot of time given to her, and they don't even do a lot with it. Like this season, I mean, this episode, I think there was like one scene that even talked about it. Her boyfriend is like completely irrelevant at this point, as is Rue's sister, which is a huge fuck up <laughs> uh rue's mom is barely in this show as well she just off doing whatever and her mom is nowhere to be found i think she's been in the show like once or twice this season uh at this point i just i feel like i'm really only watching for nate cal and fez and lexi which is is strange to say because last season it was all very consistently engaging with everyone's storylines. But now this season, I can't even tell if the the stuff with Nate and Cal and Fez has gotten better. Or if it's just the rest of the show getting worse. There was a moment in this season where I kind of realized um, the problems I have with it. And that was with this most recent episode. Um, during that montage where Cal goes to the gay bar... And he's just like dancing and reliving um, the the last time he was there uh, with his best friend, and it's intercut with footage of Cassie losing her mind. And as I was watching that, I was like, "Man, these two storylines are not on the same level at all. They do not feel equally significant in the slightest." And it was so strange watching that. It was like listening to this like acclaimed art house kind of album and occasionally there would be like crazy frog stuck in there it was it was very jarring and usually that kind of montage would kill you'd be like oh there's so many parallels right now dude i'm really feeling this montage right now the music selection everything's perfect no I wasn't feeling that. I was feeling like, damn, why are they trying to make me believe that the shit going on with Cassie is nearly as significant as the shit going on with Cal? And need I remind you, at the end of this episode, he leaves his fucking family. <laughs> that fool just walks out. <laughs> and, and they're trying to... <laughs> they're trying to sit there and make me believe that, that Cassie... And all of this shit that's gone on with her this season is nearly as important. I don't believe it. I don't fucking buy it. It just isn't. Like, it's not even a matter of me buying it or not. It just isn't. <laughs> that is, it's just not. It hasn't been given the the development and the the time that it's really needed. And, I, well, I don't even know if that's true. Because they've devoted a lot of time to it. But a lot of the problem with it is that a lot of it has just been retreading. Um we're shown one thing and we're like oh that's fucked up and then they keep showing examples of that same thing happening over and over again and i'm like yeah i get it it's fucked up but i'm not learning anything new about it you know with cal it's been like every single new thing that's been shown has been like earth shattering so there's that maybe i'll be proven wrong by the end of this season and uh, maybe it'll all turn around and I'll eat my words. I'll be happy to do that. If it all like turns around and, and makes sense by the end, then hell fucking yeah, dude. We got another season of great TV. But so far, I am significantly less interested than I was last season. But hey, at least Attack on Titan is still crazy. One more thing. Um, I want to talk about the potential influence that this show might have. Now... I am not the kind of person where I sit there and I'm like, if a character does anything bad in a media property, that it's going to negatively influence um, the audience. Because that's not true. 
I'm not out here watching American Psycho like, ah, yes, I love murdering my coworkers. No. Um, I was talking with my friend Dom tonight about the show, and he brought up that he thinks that this season might have kind of a a worse effect on on people this time around. And I was thinking to myself, I, I mean, I think maybe the worst that'll happen is like some kids will be dickheads for a minute. But then I realized the very fact that this is even being brought up is kind of an issue in itself. It's an indicator that the drug abuse and all of that isn't being handled as delicately as it was last season and to an extent i don't think it is in the first season it was very very obvious that all the shit that rue is doing is terrible but now her literally going out and getting five grand worth of drugs is sort of played off for like a a, a comedy moment and i think that could work in a certain context but i don't know i, I just don't feel like it was as well handled this time around i i'm not i'm not out here trying to be the arbiter of morals or whatever i really don't give a fuck because i realistically i don't think this show is going to have too bad of an impact like is in like a 13 reasons why situation they are certainly handling it better than a lot of shows out there would however you need a certain level of care when you're dealing with stuff like this. And I feel like that care is kind of being dropped a little bit in favor of focusing on the sensationalizing of the drama this time around. But maybe that'll change. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs>